Have you ever wondered how you could build a bunch of objects into a scene, like in a city builder game or farming game, leave the scene, and come back and they all still be there? I'm going to show you the simplest way that I could come up with. There are more robust ways of doing this, but I find this to be the simplest one that's the easiest to understand. So here I have a little game example where I can place buildings, save it, get rid of them all so they're gone, and then load them back in. And that's all being done with just these little events. And the reason that I like this setup is because I can add whatever I want to to it and still have it work. So if I wanted to add the angle of all objects, for example, I could just add the action to the save section to save the angle of all objects. And then when loading, slot it in right here to change the angle of all objects and then change this value and this value because now there are four things being saved. Now to show you that the actual angle is working, I'll just put these in here. And to show you how flexible this is, I will also add another object called building. Add that to the project, put it into the scene, angle it, and then go to all objects, the group, because these events are using all objects, the group. So I'll just add that to the group. And now it's there. It's there. I will save, delete, and load. And everything was saved in that array and then loaded back in. So to show you how to set this up, I've actually created a blank version of the same scene. So the first thing I need to do is add a group called all objects. And in global variables, this is already set up. This is an array variable with no children. All right. And so we have all objects with the large building and small building in the group. And let's get started. So the first thing is I need the save and load buttons. And I'm going to be checking back to the other event sheet just to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. And the first thing we're going to want to do is add a for each object event type. And we'll go for all objects, the group. So now this event will repeat for every building in the scene. And then we'll look up arrays, global arrays, add a text variable to the array, and we'll look up object name. And we'll use all objects in this event. So this is going to save the name of all objects to the array, save all objects. And let's just make sure this is working properly first. So we'll go to preview with the debugger. Refresh, global, nothing there. Place a building. Place two buildings. Save. Refresh. And there we go. But we need to add the next action because if I keep pressing save, it will just keep adding to that array. So the next action is this one. Clear array. And we want to do it for global variables and for this array. Cool. So now when I do it, save, refresh, global, three. But next time I press save, refresh, it's all the same. Because it's clearing them before adding in the new variables. So it gets rid of the old ones before adding new ones. And then we need to add a number variable to an array. And the number we want to add is the X position of all objects in the all object group. And we'll do the same thing for Y. And now place it, save, refresh. There we go. We have the name for large building and the X and Y, and then the name for the other large building and the X and Y. Now to load them in. For this one, we're going to use a repeat event type. So not for each object, but just repeat. 
In here, you can typically write in a value like 20 and it'll repeat 20 times, but we're going to use a variable. And this time we're going to use global variable child count and use save all objects. So that's our global variable for the array. And this will repeat for the number of children variables in this parent variable which means it's going to repeat for every child under the array. But we don't want it to do that. We want it to repeat for every three variables because three child variables represents one object right now. In this case, it's four because we're saving four things per object. In this case, it's just three. And then we want to create an object from its name and again, we're going to go all objects so we can use the group instead of having to use an individual object. All right. So for this, we want to use the first variable in the array. So we're going to type in save and get the save all objects array. But you can't just use the array. You need to tell what number. So we're going to type in zero for now and then do the same thing. But one and two. There we go. This is the name we saved. This is the X position we saved because it's the second number. And this is the third number and that's the Y position. So we're going to create an object with that name at the X and Y position in the variable. So let's try that. Put it into the game, save, refresh, check the global variables. We got the large building, the X position, the Y position. We delete it. Delete, gone, load. There it is. But if we have multiple objects, it's not going to know what to do with them. Save. Because we're only using 0, 1, and 2, and then beyond that, it doesn't know what to do. So now's where we need the climb variable that's in here. So we're going to change a number variable for a scene and we're going to add a variable. We're going to add climb variable, make it a number, climb set to zero. So it starts at zero every time. And then at the end of that, every time it repeats this event, we'll add three because each object is represented by three different variables and then we'll divide this by three so it only repeats after every three variables are checked ah set to add three but before this will actually work we need to change the zero one and two to use the climb variable so i'm going to remove the zero type in climb variable there we go same thing for one, but we use climb variable plus one, and then the same thing for two, but we use the climb variable plus two. So it'll be zero, one, two, and then the next time it repeats, it'll be three, four, five, repeat, six, seven, eight, repeat, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So now let's preview that. Place, 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 save, delete, load. And that's it. And just like shown in the earlier example, you can add whatever you want to in here. You can add animations and then slot that in right here above the climb variable and adjust this value and this value to represent how many things you're saving per object. Now, you might want to do something a little different with this, where this actually happens at the beginning of scene. So when you walk out of and into a scene, things can be loaded back in the way they were when you walked out. But ideally, for a lot of things, you'll want to save that array with all the variables externally. So when the saving is done, you'd want to save a text 
And then at the beginning of the scene, load a text, like that. But to do this properly, you need to save the entire array. So if you want to learn how to do that, check out this video.